or you need more coffee. <laughs> well, we're going to celebrate uh, our winners today, and then we're going to have a great panel. So this is going to be a very interactive uh, uh, session. Uh, so let's start with, with the track winners. We, we have uh, three different tracks, and we would like to recognize those presenters who obtained the highest scores. So we'll have the winners in each conference track. So we, uh, we would like to invite them to join us in the stage when we mention our name. We already have here uh, Mr. Carlos Guevara, right? He's a winner, right there from Ostos Community College, who received the highest score in the assessment track. Congratulations, Mr. Guevara. <laughs> I think that we, we have a nice award that uh, ULT is, is preparing for, for him, but let me also uh, introduce to you Dr. Doris Vilma Rodriguez from EDP University. There she is, a very dear friend of mine. Thank you. And she received the highest score in the retention track. So congratulations, Dr. Rodriguez. And finally, we also have Carla Gonzalez from University of Puerto Rico, UPI. <laughs> and, uh, in the main Rio Piedras campus here in San Juan. And she received the highest score not only within the track, but all the tracks. So the big winner. Congratulations. <laughs> And uh, now I think our executive president, Jubel Kiss, uh, has been nice. Yeah, Jubel is a from David Mendes, the, the uh, artist from Anandi Mendes. If you can come up for a picture, please. Let me We have another award that we uh, we didn't have yesterday for our speaker, Dr. John Sanders. Dr. Sanders, it's a great piece of art that uh, you're going to take with you. Latin America and the world, he's my friend of course, uh, Dr. Tito Melendez from the University of Puerto Rico. So let's give him a, a nice warm welcome. Let's give the mic or no mic? Oh, it's all yours. No, oh, it's which I felt I didn't like. Um, I wanted this session to be, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, to be logical. You know, if you're there, it's because you want to pick their brains, right? You know, if they're there and they're winners, you want to know what they did so you can <coughs> copy what they did. So I figured, let me change the questions around. Let me change the dynamics here around so that it would be more beneficial for you. Okay, so the thing is, is that each one has, uh, has a specialty. Each one has a particular focus which is interesting for us to be able to pick their brains with. If we look at what they've done, there are three areas that they have, and, and the idea is to exchange ideas among those three areas. Those three areas were uh, instructional design, 
assessment and retention, which are three areas that are really important for us. Those are three areas that we really want to improve. So the idea is, from their particular perspectives, from their particular experience, to attack those three questions, to attack those three themes, and to see what they've done, and it'll serve as an incentive for us to go to their next session, which where they will delve into more, more, uh, with more detail in terms of what they're doing. So the first theme that I'm interested in them uh, contributing to, to today's session, the first one is on instructional design. So if, if uh, how, let me see, uh, the first one to my left, Carla? <laughs> you have the microphone in your hand, okay. If Carla could start off um, talking about instructional design from her experience and from her great experiment that she had, and then we'll just go on. The idea is if we have questions, the, the idea if we have some sort of, 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 of issue that we want to raise, we can raise it and have a discussion, not wait for the end not to have that formality when we really want to have you know, the experience of picking their brains. So, Carla, let's start with you. Okay, thank you. Good morning to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, before I start, I would like to know um, how many of you have heard of this or massive open online courses? To show of hands. Okay, it seems that if not everybody, uh, more than half, has heard of it. Massive open online courses are, we know online courses, right? Um, we, we're well familiar with that. But massive open online courses um, can reach vast audiences. Um, it can reach hundreds of students, thousands of students, tens of thousands of students, and even uh, 100,000 students. Um, so one of the challenges that we have with MOOCs is how do we design and produce a single offering that can satisfy the, the needs of all of those students. And instructional design is one of the ways to do it. Um, the University of Puerto Rico uh, in 2003 developed a, a massive open online course. It was its first MOOC. Um, 2013, yes, thank you. Uh, 2013, um, Tito, uh, Dr. Juan Melendez was the facilitator of that MOOC. It was sort of a meta MOOC because the MOOC was on instructional design. Um, and we modeled the practices that we were teaching the students within the design of the MOOC. So instructional design is very important in providing in a, a few key aspects. Providing um, a variety, enough variety within the MOOC so that all students can find exactly what they need or at least come close to uh, realizing their learning expectations. Um, also, um, instructional design is important in creating a repeatable methodology that helps in the production process. In a MOOC production, which is video-based, is uh, very time and cost um, intensive. So if we have an instructional design that has a repeatable structure, um, a well thought out design, it helps with efficiency and you can standardize the production process while still building enough variety within the MOOC and learning options so that the students can um, maximize the learning uh, experience. Do we take questions? Yes. Yeah. So one of the, in, in my uh, brain of what I know, one of the downsides of MOOCs uh, has been assessment and integrity of assessment. And so, you know, are you talking about MOOCs for first time credit or are you talking about MOOCs for uh, kind of a informal learning? Uh, can you speak to that issue? Sure, our MOOC design was exploratory in nature. So we didn't offer uh, credit for that MOOC. Um, I was speaking in general terms. Uh, the instructional design of a MOOC is important regardless of uh, whether it's credit-based um, or, or not. Uh, we offered certificates of participation which were not validated. That means uh, we couldn't 
uh, truly know um, or, or, or verify the identity of the person completing the course. Um, the uh, certificate of participation was free to students. So was the MOOC. They didn't pay to, to access it. Um, so there was no fee-based component to it. Um, but, but you're right, assessment is one of the challenges, uh, as is uh, satisfying the learning experience, uh, the learning goals of, uh, of the students during the service experience. Um, at, at Good morning, everyone, and um, happy to be here uh, and uh, to see a lot of a lot of um, great uh, uh, audience. And then I know that we're going to have great and difficult questions for us, which is going to be uh, the purpose of this panel. We want to make sure that we hear from you and we learn from each other. Um, from the experience we've had in in providing. Um, instructional design support to, uh, to our faculty at Hostos, it's been um, an interesting challenge to disappear the technology, just when the technology is not perceived as technology, then it is working. So instructional design, it, it's close to that. So it's being able to focus on the real need, focus on the pedagogical side, being able to have a conversation about the real problems that faculty want to solve, and then from there, have a conversation about how the technology is going to be able to um, make sense to um, implement it in, in your course. Um, it is difficult to be able to provide um, solutions for every single problem, so that's why it's important to identify common elements in instructional design, being able to at least have a baseline in what are the most important elements that have to be present. How you make them present, that will be part of the conversation when you do um, the, uh, the design of the course together with the faculty member. So um, I think it is important to be able to understand the two sides, right? To be able to, the instructional designer to understand where faculty are coming from, to understand the teaching environment, and uh, being able to then have that conversation. Eliminate the technology, uh, and that, that comes also through through the, um, the years. Usually, well, you, a technology comes and the, the immediate uh, need.